Oh, hi again. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, let me see the audience. Okay, they are coming. Uh, we talked about the daily activities and the mind. Okay, which one do you want to talk for the next one? Yeah, so, um, well, I got about 10 minutes left here. I'd love to talk about developing body awareness. Um, so that's uh, the second one that we have. So just to, uh, for people who are just tuning in, we're talking about daily health and wellness habits, daily health and wellness habits, uh, developing body awareness, strengthening the body into alignment, and M&Ms, or mindfulness and mindset. So let's go back to developing body awareness. And basically what this is, is we want to do something every day to develop our level of body awareness. And what is body awareness? It's basically the mind's ability to recognize where tension and pain is at throughout the body, but it's also the ability to recognize how your body lays on itself. So for example, you, did, you uh, mentioned a lot of, you did a lot of great examples earlier, washing the dishes, shoulder rising, you're smoking a cigarette, shoulder rising. This is all um, coming back to developing body awareness. If we have a high level of body awareness, we can recognize when our shoulders are rising. So you don't have to have someone pointing it out for you, especially in a master class or a lesson. We can also recognize if you're sleeping or if you're in a car or if you are just living daily life, you could recognize which positions make your body uncomfortable. There are certain positions when you're lifting, when you're doing yard work, when you're in a car where um, maybe your neck starts to hurt. Well, um, you know, I look at a lot of drivers and it seems like a lot of drivers, the longer they drive, the more their neck goes forward. And the farther our neck goes forward, I don't know if you guys realize, but the head weighs approximately 10 pounds, right? And if we were to hold a bowling ball like this with our shoulder, we could do it for a long period of time. But as we start creeping out with that bowling ball, it's going to start to put a lot of pressure on your neck and a lot of pressure on your spine. So naturally, tension and pain is going to start to manifest back here. And when it starts to manifest back here, and it's going to get to a point where your neck can no longer stand that tension and pain. It's going to start to creep to your shoulders and your upper back. And soon you're experiencing really, really bad middle back pain. So developing a body awareness is more than just recognizing tension and pain in the body, but it's the ability to recognize where your body is at in space and time in any life scenario. So I think this is one of the most important things that we can do as musicians to kind of help facilitate performing without pain in the long run. Is it the only thing we should do? Heck no. Is it going to help? Is it the only thing that's going to perform with, be able to get you to perform without pain? No, but it is an important piece of the puzzle that we all need to incorporate into our lives. And just to give people a little application based um, uh, purpose, like we can do this through a lot of different ways, right? Alexander Technique, Feldenkrais, uh, Eldoa are all great things to do to help develop your level of body awareness. But from a sports science perspective, so is yoga, so is mobility, so is strength training. These are all ways uh, we can learn how our body reacts and how our body works together as a unit. And as soon as we can start incorporating daily habits to help facilitate that growth, the sooner we can start to live daily life without experiencing all this random tension and pain that kind of debilitates and takes away from our enjoyment of life. Yes, uh, as you mentioned, uh, body awareness is really important uh, or uh, as we call it self-evaluation. Uh, for example, if there's, an, uh, there's no light and there's no mirror to check yourself, uh, you have to be able to picture, picture yourself from the outside and have a, a vivid picture of yourself. Okay. Uh, uh, you have to check your posture, the alignment of the shoulders, the relaxing of the body, and the, uh, you know even the muscle contractions. It's really important to understand them. When you have a no muscle contraction here, for example, now I understood that uh, I was on, uh, you know a contraction was happening here. So I just changed my posture to a better one to uh, stop you know uh, to uh, stop that from happening to, uh, and getting worse. And uh, one thing that uh, you said, uh, and it's really important, uh, was the Alexander technique and the other things for, uh, you know, that have addressed these problems, like body mapping. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, a couple of days ago, I, I had a session with Eddie, which is uh, our next guest, next week, I mean. Uh, and uh, he was teaching me some techniques of body mapping. It's, it, it's wonderful. And the Alexander and the yoga, uh, they really help. Uh, in muse muscle, what we have, uh, we say, uh, okay, we know the posture and uh, we know how we have to be, you know, 
what is a good posture and how you can you know handle it but uh, when uh, we have it you no know, difficult piece and uh, we are in advanced level or even in uh, elementary level because in elementary one piece is difficult for the uh, you know beginners and the other piece is beginner for, uh, is difficult for the advanced uh, players so there is always some difficulties and uh, we say uh, you need some muscle contraction release exercises if it happen and if you had a bad posture and uh, there uh, you are not in a good uh, position and uh, for example you are not feeling well now you have to have some uh, muscle contraction re uh, release exercises to get rid of those uh, things you have something especially uh, for getting rid of those uh, contractions that would happen due to bad posture can you repeat that Ahmed? Uh, I say uh, in Muse Muscle, we have some muscle contraction release exercises that help musicians to get rid of the uh, possible contractions during playing. Do you have uh, similar exercises in your gotcha. approach? Yeah. Gotcha. Sorry, I just didn't hear you. Our internet connection was like a little spotty sometimes. So basically, the type of body awareness that I like to incorporate into all my clients in my own life is mobility. And mobility is basically uh, the putting a joint and a muscle throughout its entire range of motion. All right. So it's not, it's not enough of just to put your arm across and stretch, but rather move your arm throughout its entire range of motion to see if there are any limiting effects um, that is detracting from your range of motion. So range of motion is one of those things where uh, it's a really early warning sign of a performance related injury. Those are one of the things that happen that if you start losing your range of motion, you open yourself up to a greater risk of injury, right? So mobility in the sense is we are um, contracting our muscles and releasing them just by simply doing these exercises. The same thing with yoga. If you wanna hold warrior one, you're contracting your glutes, you're contracting your abs and you're contracting your quads. If I'm doing shoulder cars, which are available on the Functional Musician Instagram webpage, um, I post mobility every Monday, it's where I'm putting my shoulder through an entire range of motion and I'm actually strengthening my shoulder. So when I strength train, I actually don't do a lot of shoulder exercises because the amount of shoulder stuff I do on a daily basis with my shoulder cards and other exercises works my muscles in a way where I don't need to do that. So in a way, just by simply doing these mobility exercises and learning how the body functions um, in its own right, in its own way, you are contracting and releasing muscles as you do these. And I, I can't give you one exercise right now because I would be giving everybody a Band-Aid solution. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of Band-Aid solutions. I don't believe in treating the symptom. I believe in treating the whole. That's why I approach injury prevention from a holistic standpoint. But if you're more curious about mobility routines, more curious about mobility, go check out my page. Every Monday I do Mobility Monday. And last week I did um, some wrist exercises. The week before that, I did a full mobility routine. So it really um, changes week to week. But that will give you a kind of a, an idea of um, some exercises that can help contracting and release. And that's actually what I think is missing in a lot of the body awareness development is the idea of contracting your muscle and then releasing our muscles. I mean, in music, it's all about tension and release, right? Well, the same thing applies to exercise. So when we're doing these wrist exercises that I did last Monday, like I am like opening my hand as wide. You can see I'm promoting tension in my hand, but then I release it. Tension release, tension, release. I'm putting it through its entire range of motion. And by doing this, I'm making sure that my joints and my muscles can stay healthy. So when I go to my instrument, I know what it feels like to have tension. I know what it feels like to have release. And therefore, simply from introducing those two different concepts into that exercise, you're teaching yourself what tension feels like and what release feels like. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. By doing that, you're actually introducing the release uh, and the, the tension and you want to say, okay, when you are playing and you have the same feeling when you are uh, actually, uh, uh, let's say, contracting your muscle, it's the same and you have to get rid of that. Yes? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, if we have time, uh, we can talk about the last one. Do you have time? Sure. Yeah, I got five minutes. Okay. Uh, Go through the last one, the last item, and sure, we can discuss yeah. last one. I'll try to go through this as quickly as possible um, for our listeners. So 
the third one out of my four concepts that I like to listen to is we need to strengthen our body into alignment. And this is especially important if you play a stringed instrument or a brass instrument and your shoulders are rounded. Now, rounded shoulders are just one of the many postural imbalances that we can have in our body. But if we play um, an instrument where we put our shoulders, I said this earlier, where we put our shoulders um, in a very repetitive uh, like motion over a long period of time, because we're rounding our shoulders, we actually put our shoulders in a very compromised position, right? That's constant um, internal rotation, which puts the shoulders in that compromised position. And then if you're playing violin, you are basically relying on your arm rather than your shoulder because the shoulder can't functionally work optimally like it is meant to. So with that said, what we want to do is we want to strengthen our body into alignment by in, in the case of the rounded shoulders, we wanna get our shoulders to naturally come back and go back in their natural position. Now, am I suggesting that when we play our instrument and we're walking around in our daily lives to retract and depress our scapula, pull our shoulders back, stand up nice and straight and pop our chest? No, we actually wanna train our body to do that naturally. Because if we're just tr constantly trying to pull our shoulders back, I mean, look at me, like that's a lot of tension. That's not healthy. That's not functional, but if you can get your body to that point where it naturally wants to go in that position, you are gonna be so much more functional. You're gonna have less tension and pain. Your posture is gonna be better. And whenever you have a nice upright posture, if you do that naturally, like it sounds really corny, but your confidence is gonna go through, a roof, through the roof and people are gonna notice. They're gonna be like, wow, like Hamid, your posture looks great. You look confident. You look like a, like a good person. Like I'm gonna go say hi to you because you just, your, your stature is just so, um, uh, riveting or like so uh, confident, right? So strengthening our body into alignment isn't necessarily forcing our body into these proper muscle imbalances, but it's naturally training our body in a way where we can return it to its functional state. Does that make sense? Yes, of course it makes. Thank you for a clarification. It was perfect. Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh uh, we have a couple of questions here. Your son have written them for us. Uh, do you have time to answer them or uh, we can just yeah, sit I have, another? Yeah, I just have a couple more minutes here. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, there was a question about the uh, young, uh, as the children who want to start playing the brass or any of them, okay? Uh, on the brass as a whole. Uh, what do you really suggest? Because the instrument is heavy and uh, holding the instrument is not going to be easy for them. What do you usually suggest? Um, well, I mean, I'm a, I've taught middle school um, for a number of years, three or four years. And, um, you know, it really depends on the student. Like, it's really about what the student wants to play. Like, honestly, like, I've taught tuba students that are like, four feet tall and weigh 80 pounds and they absolutely love it it's really about what the child wants to learn now granted like they should be able to try a bunch of different instruments to see what they like but a lot of the times um you know if someone wants to join band or wants to play an instrument from a very very early age before fifth or sixth grade they've already been exposed to what instrument that they want to play whether that's through live music whether that's through family affiliation or some kind of um environment right so you know, for trombones, like a lot of my trombone students, because they're so tiny, they can't reach sixth position. Uh, but there are ways around that. I found ways to kind of manipulate the body in a way that still um, does not promote tension and pain. Uh, but at the same time, like um, you can also be honest with the student and be like, well, you can't hit sixth position now because you're in fifth grade. But um, when you get to sixth or seventh grade, you're going to be able to hit the sixth position. So let's focus on those inner positions right now and make them as, you know, great as we can. And the great thing about middle school is that middle school band directors don't mind, or most middle school band directors don't mind students switching around the band if they show up and they're really good students. If someone plays the flute, for example, um, actually, I just took a workshop with this guy named Scott Teggy, and he said uh, he played flute um, as a way to pick up girls when he was little. And then after the first year of playing flute, he was last chair, and he sat next to the only other boy out of like 26 flutes, and then he switched to tuba. I mean, like, if you're talking in terms of two different instruments that are com the complete end of the spectrum, you have flute and you have tuba. And um, he was a little dude, so he made both of them work, right? And I would argue he's, it was a good switch to the tuba because he was last chair on the flute. So I guess what it really comes down to is um, 
students are going to grow, children are going to grow, but as long as they are passionate, as long as they are playing something that they love and are excited about, um, there are ways around the body and the ergonomic challenges of the instrument. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, let's talk about the uh, teacher, teacher's role in a uh, no learning process for musicians and uh, performance-related injuries. How do you think a teacher can affect uh, you know a musician's life and or a student's life, and how he can affect on uh, performance-related injuries in terms of prevention, uh, you know, reducing or even uh, elimination? Sure. Well. This is a very open-ended question, so I'm going to try to be as clear and um, concise as possible, okay? So this is just my opinion, um, but you know, it all comes down to the education system. It all comes down to the institution's missions and values of their teachers. So for example, if you're at a very private, um, privately run institution, music school, um, chances are that the music school is very, very tiny the resources that that school has are very, very little. So it really becomes the teacher's role into being able to openly educate themselves on these types of topics and openly um, reach out to people when they want to learn more. So for example, at Indiana University, since they are a, a division one school and their music school is about 2000 music students, the resources uh, that they have are enormous and they actually have their own performing arts um, little uh, school, or not school, little uh, performing arts medicine office that helps music students who are dealing with tension and pain throughout the school year. And these are free uh, services. But if you go to another school, um, say across America, like a private um, college or a small public university in California, perhaps maybe they don't have all of these performing arts medicine resources available. So at that point, the, the teacher has to be willing to number one, educate themselves. Number one, be open to new ideas. And number three, not afraid to be, to reach out and know what resources that school has. Now, this is just, you know, there are so many different ways you can approach this and so many different ways you can think about this. But as a teacher, it's really what com comes down to what the teacher's core beliefs are and what they believe their role as a teacher is. For me as a teacher, if a student comes to me with a problem and I don't know, it's my job to help them figure it out to help them guide their hand down the path towards wherever they need to go. If I was not educated in injury prevention, if I was not educated in this type of uh, field and a student came to me and they're like, I'm experiencing an injury, I would have already done my research prehand knowing that IU has a performing arts office. And I'd be like, hey, you, you wanna check out this resource, they're, they might be able to help you. Check this out. And if they can't help you, I would go to the um, sports, the uh, School of Public Health and Education at IU, and I would be contacting other um, professors in kinesiology and sports science, and maybe even the athletic training department to see if they would be able to help this student. So it all comes down to the network of resources that your school has, but also educating yourself and being willing to increase your knowledge base. So if that situation ever comes up for a student that you know how to help them or you know which way to point them for them to get to their destination or their goal, in my opinion. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. I really appreciate your information and thank you for sharing it with us. Uh, I know that you are busy and you have to go, so uh, I don't wanna um, uh, go further maybe uh, there are of course some questions maybe we have to set another time for the response yeah sure uh, well um, if there's another question I'm happy to answer it I'm loving um, I'm loving this conversation uh, but I do have to cap it on one more question if there is one okay uh, let me just check it uh-huh uh, I have a question about the different methods that work uh, about performance-related injuries. Uh, what's your idea? Can we you know, have a community and uh, we all get together, share knowledge, and try to make it uh, you know, uh, a common knowledge among musicians? For example, it's a course in the university and everybody's aware of that. And uh, they all uh, you know, learn the performance-related injuries methods uh, parallel to their uh, instrument playing and instrument learning. How do you find it? Can we just, uh, you know, make this community? Yeah, I mean, you know, to build a community um, is something I'm still kind of researching. I'm trying to build my own community 
And, um, you know, I mean, there are so many factors that are playing into effect. Um, university level, we could literally talk about that for half an hour, um, but there are a lot of limitations from a university level that prevent performance related injury from being a mainstream required course curriculum uh, in their studies. So, but for us to come together on Instagram, I think we're doing it we're doing a great job. We are taking strides in the right direction. For example, um, I have collaborated with other musician health and wellness people on social media, such as you, Hamid, and such as the Align Musician and the Yam Yoga Studio is doing fantastic things. They're developing a community that is coming together and uh, or, uh, creating awareness of these problems. I mean, there are so many different um, health and wellness things out there. And I do think that we can come all together, maybe in like an event or two during the year, that would be awesome. And maybe that's something we can talk about in the future. But, you know, as far as um, taking strides, I think we're starting to go um, down the right path. It's just a matter um, of uh, changing how people think about this. And it's challenging because we're coming from an environment that has that is filled with 100 years of toxicity a hundred years of old school ways of thinking, not thinking about the long term, but also pain equals gain. And that's not something that um, is applicable in the 21st century anymore. And I think we're starting to realize that more as other people in my generation, other people of my age are starting to go through these injuries, start to getting, start getting really, really mad that there isn't anything out there and that um, we still haven't fixed this problem in our tired of that change not happening and they're making the change themselves so in, in the you know the respect of other social media health and wellness people out there like keep doing it great job let's come together and keep spreading awareness but i do think we're in the right direction now if we're going to talk about i would the university question i think can be better saved for another time because we could literally talk about the limitations and implications that has on society um for you know that's an entire discussion we could talk about for yes. hours um in its own um so, so from that matter, from that matter, I do, I do digress, but I do must say that, you know, um, you know, the Yam Yoga Studio, the Align Musician, the Conditioned Musician, the Functional Musician, we are all trying to spread awareness and we're all trying to impact uh, musicians uh, in a positive light. So um, I hope people can see that and I hope people are going to be start to start to open up to how important musician health and wellness is and how it can be applicable to their lives, because until we change how society treats musicians how society treats us from um, a mental and physical perspective um, unfortunately it's going to be a very slow change but i think we can do this quicker i think we can all come together and i think building a community is essential to facilitating this change over the long term great question Hamid. thank you yes i really appreciate uh, every method and whoever is working this field and uh, i think we all uh, have to do something and they are all doing great we have the, you know, the chance to learn from each other, like today that I uh, host you and learned a lot from you. Thank you so much for joining. And I really enjoyed having uh, a lot in common with you. It was wonderful. <laughs> I really enjoyed it today. Uh, and I really want to have it uh, again, if you're okay. We can, uh, yes, uh, to arrange the time, if it's okay for you. But uh, for now, uh, I want to thank you for joining us and sharing your uh, valuable knowledge with us. Sure. Well, Hamid, it's great to meet you. It's great to talk to you. Thank you for putting this together and bringing me on. Uh, I had a fantastic time. I'm more than happy to continue this conversation another time. We can just reach out and we can connect um, in the future on that. And, you know, I wish you the best and I can't thank you enough for this opportunity, man. It was great talking to you. And I hope uh, everybody that's listening took something out of this conversation. Thank you. It was my honor, and uh, I really appreciate your uh, attitude and your uh, approach. Hope to see oh. you soon.